Hello everyone, my name is Steve Lentini and I'm president of Lord and Lentini Training for Life, Sales Training, Leadership Training, Customer Service Training. I also do some strategy sessions with companies working from the end in mind, what is it they want to build, starting with the end picture and I help them work backwards to a behavior plan. And that's what's important in managing salespeople, is helping them with their behavior not putting pressure on them for outcomes. So one of the things that I see is sales managers and owners of companies, uh, family companies in particular, a lot of times are pushing people, what did you close today? And so they're wondering what some of the reasons are that salespeople get stuck and they get blocked. And what, one of the big reasons that they get stuck and blocked is they're, they're attached to outcomes. Now, so what I have here on the board is detaching from outcomes because that's what I teach. And if you're looking to hire millennials and attract millennials into your sales forces, in many industries, by the way, aging sales forces. And the reason for it is, especially in distribution, you have a mature industry that's not attractive compared, when compared against all the high tech industries that are out there and all the, the startups and all the internet companies. And so, distribution companies and mature industries like distribution companies, they're going to exist. You're, you're, uh, you're not going to have a drone delivering 50 pound, 80 pound packages. Um, so what's going to happen in the future is who's going to be selling. It's going to look differently. And since the sales force is going to look different, what you teach them has to be different because what worked 20, 30, 40 years ago isn't working today. The shift actually was made in the beginning. It started when I got into sales uh, 42 years ago, 1975. I was four years old. Uh, so anyway, selling, even back then I noticed a shift that when I was using what I was taught, which is features, advantages, benefits, I noticed people mostly wanting to get away. They wanted to move away from a salesperson with a spiel. Uh, and I noticed even today some people are so nervous when they walk in to meet people, which is their job by the way. That's what the behavior you want people to learn is that their job is to go meet people. I can help them with what to say and we can help them with what to say and what to do when they go to meet people. But first, they have to detach from outcomes, detach from outcomes. And when I taught that, I, I remember mentioning it to a, one particular company owner who said, oh, detaching from outcomes. I want my people attached to outcomes. And I thought, wow, this guy needs a lot of growth and a lot of learning because we can't control other people. So it told me he was a manipulator, that he was not uh, even, he was clueless. He was not even close to understanding what was happening in the sales world today. So what's happening with millennials and the young people that we want selling is they don't want to be told, what did you close? They don't want to be asked, what did you close lately? Certainly they don't mind a scorecard, but remember everybody got a trophy. Everybody got a, an award. Everybody got a ribbon. Everybody went to their games. It's a whole different world than the one you and I grew up in. And so what is, how does that translate into today's culture for selling? So today with millennials, they don't want to make cold calls unless it's in a group. And then the other thing is to talk to them about meeting people. That's their job is to go out and meet people and then teach them about detaching from outcomes. Your job is not outcomes. That's exactly what you say. Your job is to meet people. Find the fit. Notice how they're feeling when you walk in. Are they resistant? Are they giving you a look? If they give you a look like that, you'd say, wow, you look like you're a little apprehensive. You probably don't want to hear that I'm a salesperson. Something like that. And I teach people to go with their gut and to have some natural ability to make a connection with people by being grounded, detaching from outcomes, not being attached to selling them anything. You're not going to sell them anything today. You're going to help them buy. It's a whole different energy. And when they perceive that energy that you have, that's recognizing their body language, recognizing their energy. If someone's got a smile and 
uh, they're looking pretty receptive, you'd say, wow, you you really look happy today. And and start with that. Hey, my name is Steve, and I'm not here to sell anything for now. I'd like to have a dialogue with you if you've got a few minutes. I do see you buy some of the supplies that we carry. So you're not mentioning the word selling, not like it's a bad a bad word, but people are buying today. They're buying on the internet. They're buying without salespeople. The millennial today too, when you're talking about detaching from outcomes, it will insulate them from rejection because their job is to go meet people. How many people did you meet today? I met 12. Great. What are some of the people you met? What were some of their companies? What were the kind of conversations that you had? That's what we would be teaching people today to build relationships and have conversations. So in business to business supplies, for example, where a lot of distributors reside, you, you first want to understand that if you walk in the door, they're buying from somebody. They're buying from somebody. But if you're meeting people and you're going to have a certain assigned territory, then you let them know you're going to be around. Is it okay if I stop in with some ideas? Uh, would you mind if I stop in to show you some new things that come out from time to time? Most people will be happy to let you stop by. You're in business. If you're selling software or medical devices or uh, even pharmaceuticals, the goal today is to have conversations with people. When you think of medical supplies and uh, pharmaceuticals, who's busier than people in healthcare? So again, it's about establishing relationships, understanding their pressures, looking at their body language, and not being attached to outcomes. It's learning how to detach from outcomes and making your job having more conversations. So I work with a lot of scientists about um, selling high-tech software and, and genome mapping software and uh, high-tech devices. And again, it's the same goal. They're not able to make the decision. They're not the decision maker about the software or about the new high-tech equipment. So they have to have conversations. What, are, what have you been using? What are some of your challenges? What are the things you'd like to improve upon? Who have you spoken to and what kind of help are, are you getting? Are, and where are your frustrations? Where are you feeling like some, you'd like someone to help you? You want to find out if they're a fit or not. And they might not be. See, that's the other thing. So if you're more coming from the introspective personality type, which is the curious type, the questioning type, you're going to make a connection faster with people who are looking to buy. And that's your job today is to help people buy. It's still a form of selling, but the subtle shift in the, in the energy is amazing. People perceive it and they come towards you. I'll give you a quick example. I had someone call me last week who I did business with five years ago and they said, Steve, I'm unhappy with the company that, that you originally put me with five years ago. I, I was working for that company and I want to make a change. And I said, so talk to me about what's changed. And, and, and he did, this buyer did. And I said, okay, so where are your frustrations? And he told me, I said, so I have a few people in mind. Do you mind if I screen them and refer them back to you and I'll bring them in? He said, no, that would be great. And so I got some other particulars, the average size of their orders, what they were ordering, what in particular they were looking for, uh, what they had uh, the most volume in. And then I talked to a few people who carry and distribute what they sell. And next week, no, I'm sorry, on the 15th, I'm actually bringing a distributor salesperson with me to make a call on this person from five years ago. Why do you think they called me? Because I helped them buy five years ago. I didn't sell them anything. I helped them buy. They were interviewing a number of suppliers at the time. I helped him buy and he remembered that and he called me. And so now I'm not in that industry, although I'm consulting some people and I'm doing some training. I actually brought, brought I'm bringing someone in uh, to meet with this person and he called me for that specific he asked me if I was still in that industry and selling for a, a different company and he didn't care that I wasn't he just wanted my help 
And so they have 33 locations. It's a fairly large uh, t uh, customer for this particular industry. And he's looking for a new distributor. So it's fascinating how that works. And I'm not attached to any outcome with him because I'm just going to refer this to someone. I'm going to help someone. And it could potentially be a fairly large customer. I don't know, six or seven hundred thousand dollars a year. So again, what I'm so what I'm talking about is is if you're not attached to outcomes, if you're detached from outcomes, you will also be much better at disqualifying or qualifying prospects because you're not going to sell everyone. And that's another thing to teach millennials. Let's, let's identify who our sweet spots are, who we serve from our customer list. Our customer list tells us a story. Who are we really good at dealing with? Who are we really productive? Who's really profitable for us? Two things from the exercise. You may discover people that you should let go of or, or um, move them up or move them out. And you'll discover where your sweet spot is and now you focus focus your millennial sales meeting efforts right there that's their behaviors to go meet people you're focusing them on meeting target customers future clients that are in your sweet spot and you're not attached to outcomes because again even if you find 25 people that are in your sweet spot you won't sell all of them and some of them will have quirky requests that don't fit for your company, that aren't productive. You get my point. If you're managing people today, with millennials, it's detaching from outcomes, talking to them about their behavior, and that it's meeting people and helping people buy. And then they need further differences in the culture. They need to not go out on the road every day. They also need to ride with someone. So they need to spend time inside, in the inside culture, because they like to be surrounded by people. Remember, everyone went to their games. And along that same idea, when they do go out, it's great to have them work from time to time in a team. It's great. You'll find more productivity. You'll attract more millennials when you're interviewing or you're going to college fairs, wherever you're going to attract younger people into your company, you'll find that when you describe your culture or when they ask questions about your culture, they'll find that attractive, even though your industry may be mature. Okay, so detaching from outcomes helps people ramp up success because now there's not rejection. Your job is to go meet people, find out who's a fit, have some conversations, know that you're going to be back five to seven to 12 to 15 times. It's taking up to 21 times today, according to the Harvard Business Review, to make a connection with people and make to make a sale or to help someone buy. Because why? Think about it. Why? They need to know who they're buying from. So they go online because they know certain companies, when you think of Amazon or Walmart, or certain companies are dependable. In business-to-business -business supplies or in software or medical devices or even pharmaceuticals, are you dependable? What's the track record? They have to know. Are you just coming in for a sale? Do you have commission breath? Are you care, do you care only about your goals? If you've got a spiel and if you've got a story that you're walking in with, you're telling people you don't care about them, about their needs. It's all about your goals and your needs, and that's an energy that pushes people away. And it tells them you're attached to an outcome, one outcome. I want a sale. So it's what I teach. It's what I can help you with. It's changing a culture and a sales approach. It's not just about changing a sales approach or teaching people something new. You have to support it all through the organization. Okay, so I'm Steve Lentini. I'm the author of Sales Success for the Rookie. It's on Amazon. It's on CD. It's in paperback. It's published by Motivational Press. This is me, Steve Lentini. And um, it's soon to be on Audible. And you can reach me, at Steve, at stevelentini.com. Steve at stevelentini.com. I also have some self-published books. Sales Success for the Seasoned Sales Veteran, How to Stay at Peak Performance, some great tips in there for self-motivation. Sales Success for the Spiritual Salesperson, you notice it's a thinner book. There aren't so many people that are selling with the idea of doing the right thing. 